The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Spokane, Washington, on your new apparatus, job number 29485. Please utilize this job number when referencing your vehicle with Hughes Fire Equipment. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting on the front bumper, this is your electronic siren. You have right and left dual air horns. Moving up onto the tread area, this is going to be a swivel inch and a half discharge. Moving inward into the center, a tub for hose storage. Moving up onto the body, this is your turn signal left and right and on the intersection of the cluster, this is your headlight cluster. On the outside of your low beams and on the inside of your high beams. Moving to the very center, you have a mechanical siren. Moving up onto the body, you have a left and right emergency warning light. Moving all the way to the top of the brow, these are your five running lights. Just above the brow, this is a right and left forward facing fixed spotlight. Moving up on the very top, these are your warning lights on the right and left hand side. And at the very top, your Opticom. Here are some generalized views of the apparatus from the driver's side. We'll now take a look at the rear of the apparatus and move to the passenger side. Once we've had an opportunity just for general appearance and views to get an idea where things are located, we'll dive into a little bit more of the detail. Why don't we go ahead and start with the very front of the apparatus just under the truck in your front bumper. This is going to be that inch and a half discharge. This is the drain for that discharge. Also located underneath are right and left tow hooks. Let's go ahead and move back up to the very top. There's some close-ups of those areas that we were just talking about. On the, uh, on the sides of the apparatus, you have a left and right warning light on the bumper. It's a downward view of that front space for hose. Your department logo. Looking at the headlight cluster, on the outer side you have a marker with a turning arrow. Looking up at the very top, including the ladder, we'll talk a little bit about more of the details there. This is that forward-facing fixed floodlight. Looking at your mirrors on the right and left-hand side, at the very top section there is a flat-style mirror. Moving to the very bottom of the mirror, this is a convex portion of the mirror. Moving to the driver's side, on the A pillar is the location of the VIN number. Moving down, looking at the tire in the center of the uh, wheel, this is going to be the location of your Stemco uh, hub seal. Uh, there is a view glass in this area for uh, fluid level. Generalized view, your uh, piece of equipment is equipped with a TAC4 suspension. Each individual door lock has its own keyed lock. Looking at the front once again, this is that bumper warning light. Moving just inside the step, this is the driver's side. This is a step light. Moving to the very back, there is also a step light located in this area. Looking from underneath, you can see that each step has its own illumination. This is for ground effects, also for the steps. Looking on the lower section of the cab body, this is a warning light. Let's go ahead and move up to the very top up here. Uh, this is going to be a tank indicator for visual. The very top would be green, tank full, very bottom, red, empty, or nearly empty. At the very top, this is your left scene light. This is going to be in between the cab and the body. We're going to go ahead and talk a little bit more of the details of those. This is going to be your uh, front section of your pump. Looking on the very left here, you have a light, and we'll go ahead and get into some of the details of your configuration of your pump. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the step that's located here. 
remove the black uh, strap once that has been removed. This will allow us uh, to flip to the outward position away from the apparatus, allowing the step to be fully deployed. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about your pump panel here. Let's start in the upper left hand corner. This is going to be a work light located on the left on the diamond plate. Moving inward, this is going to be a discharge. They're all color coded. So for example, this, darge, this discharge is color coded in the purplish color. Moving to the right, this is going to be your large diameter intake. And to the very top, a three function here. Uh, this is going to be your auxiliary uh, foam inlet, outlet, and also a strainer inside. Now looking in the orange section, this is going to be a discharge port, two and a half inch. And this is the drain for the purple one. You can you see the color coding between the two. Moving to the right hand side, this is going to be your auxiliary two and a half inch inlet. Moving to the right, this is going to be the auxiliary two and a half inch drain. And then just below that, this is going to be an inlet into your tank. Across the bottom, these levers are for drains. As you can see, they're color coded once again. All the way across the very bottom are all the different drains. A little bit of a close up here of the number one driver's side in the purple color. Close up again, number three. As you'll see, there are odd numbers on the driver's side, even numbers on the passenger side. These are going to be the location of those drains we talked about a few minutes ago. And uh, this is going to be that auxiliary inlet, two and a half inlet. As we look to the very top, this is your phone inlet, your foam strainer, and also the tank drain. Looking at the very bottom, your pump is fully enclosed. This is the handle to open it, quarter turn on the other uh, releases, and that will allow you to gain access onto the pump. Looking at the diamond plate here on your left hand side, or almost directly in the center, this is going to be an open compartment. To merely open the webbing, uh, depress the hasp, release, and at the very top, lift will allow this to come out of its current housing and gain full access uh, to the hose storage area. As we look at this in its open position, you can see at the very top, uh, you have two loads at the top, and there are also three loads at the very bottom. Also, uh, what appears to be a long storage or board storage on the uh, far left-hand side. You can see the center switch uh, in the middle or lever. This allows you to access so that those will be able to be pulled out and removed from the apparatus. Here's a picture of the currently in the uh, pulled out position. You can see that the uh, lever has been moved into the downward position. Generalized view of the side of your apparatus. Once again, we'll get into a little bit more of the details of this. Underneath, similar to the very front step, although the first part of this step will be a pull to pull the step outward. Once the step has been pulled into its outward position, then it can be unfolded similar to the uh, step just in front of that. There are also work lights and step lights in this area also. It is now currently displayed in its fully open position. Let's go ahead and move up from that location to your roll-up door. Once this door is rolled up, this you gain access to is your full pump panel. We'll go ahead and start with some of the details of your pump panel and some of the components. Let's first start in the upper left-hand corner. This is going to be your intercom speaker. Moving to the right of the intercom speaker, you'll find the hydraulic oil temperature sensor. Notice there are a variety of different flashing lights on this that will give you indications as to the critical temperature or also sensor air. Also, you have a pump heat indicator, which overheats in case your pump overheats. Moving to the right is your pump gauge heater. And moving to the right, again, this is going to be your foam A level tank indicator. Up to the very top, the round device here, this is an audible alarm. Let's go ahead and move even to the very top. This is a light once the pump is properly engaged, this light will be activated. Looking over to the very far right on the edge, this is going to be your master intake. Moving down to the two test ports here, this is your vacuum and pressure test port. And moving back up, this is your master discharge. Moving all the way to the very far right hand side, this is your PCM fault. It will indicate yellow. Moving down just beneath that, this is an additional audible speaker. 
and moving down from that is your pump overheat. This is also a amber color or yellow indicator light. Let's go ahead and take just a general look at the full pump panel here and we'll dove into some of the uh, details uh, of these components next. Let's start with the uh, section of valves and gauges here. Starting in the upper left hand corner, this is your front discharge. Moving to the right, this is going to be in yellow, your number one cross lay. Moving to the right, the number two cross lay in green. And moving further over in the light orange color is the number three cross lay. And then moving all the way to the very far side, this is your number four cross lay. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the components on the side and also right next to those gauges. First, let's start with your fire pump primer. This is the uh, Trident Air Prime. Let's move to the right. This is going to be your Pierce Command Center for controlling your pump. First thing is the check engine light in the upper left. You have your RPM gauge and a stop engine. If either of those two lights are, please heed the warning and check for problems. If you move down to the next set of uh, gauges here, this is going to be water, oil, battery, fuel, and also your pump temperatures. Moving down from that location, this is your tank water from full to empty. You also have a silence to silence any warnings that may occur. Moving down into the orange is the general menu button to select through the various menus of this center. Moving to the uh, right hand side, you'll see this is either indication for pressure control or you can operate in the RPM or throttle control. Moving down from that location, this is going to be your control module to be able to select which one you're going to pick. And then to the right, this indicates that the light is on, that your throttle is ready for uh, movement. And moving to the right hand side, this is if you programmed any presets within uh, pump pressures. Down to the very bottom, this is going to be your throttle and push for uh, idle. Let's go ahead and take a look at the right hand side. This is going to be your intercom system. Uh, you have a volume with green indicators and push to talk. This is your Pierce uh, maintenance operation schedule. This also gives you information on your job number, also GPM and RPMs for each of those pressures. Just below that, a warning label. We'll take a look on the opposite side of the pump panel. We'll start at the very top. This is going to be your uh, aerial and CAFS PTO. Switch to the right of that. And you can see just beneath that, this is going to be your tip lights on the very tip of the ladder. Let's go ahead and take a look at the larger section or cluster here. This is your forward facing front floodlight. The next one down is your driver side floodlight. And the next one down from that, passenger side flood. Then just beneath that, you're going to have your driver side and passenger side scene lights. And at the very bottom, you also have the ability to activate your air horn. Let's go ahead and move over to generalized view here for just purposes of locating things. Let's start at the very top here. These are going to be your CAFS discharge air supply valves. Each one of those is color coded and lit with the individual uh, type that you're going to be activating. To the far left, you have your tank fill. Moving to the right is your tank to pump. As you can see, all of these valves have locking positions by simply twisting it to the lock position or vice versa to unlock. This is going to be your CAFS system, your compressor to turn it on and off at the very top. You have the option of either being in manual mode or auto mode. Moving to the right, this will be the, uh, I'm sorry, to the left, this is your airflow, which is indicated in a digitally. As we move uh, to the upper section now, we're going to see the air pressure and moving down to the next section down, this is going to be your oil temperature and all the way down at the very bottom, you have a red uh, high temperature uh, for your oil. Let's move to the right. This is going to be your CAFS warning label, engaging the compressor and or utilizing it. But let's look at the Pierce foam system here. Uh, this is your power on off button. At the very top, you'll get an indicator for the power light. Moving to the right, you'll notice when the foam is on. 
and let's go ahead and go down and take a look at the uh, percentages of foam uh, to make any of those adjustments you would simply utilize uh, either your foam prime to prime that and then go ahead and start through the process of increasing or decreasing your foam percentages. To change pages and look at a variety of different information, you can push the orange button, which will page through the various types of information, and then press the enter button. This is your Pierce Foam Center. Moving just to the far right here, you can see the large wheel. This is going to be your aerial discharge to actually supply water to the top of the aerial. These are going to be the electrical valves. This is the number two passenger side discharge. And on the other side here is the large diameter passenger side discharge. This is your information on your foam system, which is the Husky 12 foam system. Let's go ahead and look at the very bottom section of the pump. These are just some generalized views of that area. But let's start on the left hand side. These are all twist uh, opening, flush, main, primer, and manifold drains. As we look down to the lower section, this is your calf outlet uh, supply valve and just beneath that your uh, fill. Moving across, these are going to be once again color-coded discharge to each of the discharges that are uh, on the section of your pump. Let's go ahead and look all the way to the very far right. This is your foam pump discharge drain, manifold drain, and the important one here is your aerial drain. Looking just above these drains, you'll find a uh, access door. Inside this access door is where you will find the location for your foam. This is to fill foam or to drain foam by simply moving that lever. And this is also the location of your override system. This is going to be the override for your manual pump transfer. So if you choose to manually pump shift override, this would be the location. There is a cover for the actual switch and an amber light that you activated that switch. Underneath this compartment, you're going to find your folding wheel chocks. Moving to the next compartment over, you have uh, two fixed or adjustable shelves. They're currently fixed in the position, but they are adjustable. You also have a pullout shelf. This is the depress uh, lever to allow the shelf to move in the outward position and also to restore that shelf. Let's go ahead and look in the upper section, the very far left hand corner. We've got a close up here of the next shot. This is going to be your uh, air pump. This is an uh, outlet from shore power, which will power this. And this maintains air pressure within your brake system. Just a generalized view of the rear section of your tool dual tandems. The very front here, you have an amber light. Behind this door is going to be your DEF fill location. You can tell that by its simply blue cap. As we move to the very center between the two wheels, this is going to be storage for SCBA bottles. Moving to the very rear section of this, just behind the rear tire here, this is going to be an access point first for your diesel fuel location, ultra low sulfur. Moving to the next compartment back, this is once again bottle storage or SCBA storage. Let's go ahead and look into some of the compartments on your apparatus. There are two compartments here. Both of them uh, mirror one another. These are both fixed shelves that are adjustable. But just to the uh, back of those compartments, you have a smaller compartment, which offers also illumination. Just above that, you have a side facing floodlight. Looking at the rear of the apparatus, the two double doors here. Once these doors are in their open position, this gains access to shelves uh, in this location that are adjustable. Looking at the rear, this is going to be the emergency light here, and this is also your rear outrigger. You can see you have a stowed ladder currently. To access that ladder to its open position, simply grab the crossbar, lift, and that will allow the ladder to be pulled in its downward position. As you can see, just inside the ladder area, this is going to be a work light in this area, and it also has a leveling device to indicate for the level front to back of your apparatus. Generalized view of the rear of the apparatus. Let's go ahead and take a look underneath the apparatus and identify some of those things. As you can see here, a clear view of the stabilizers in addition with work lights or perimeter lights. Generalized view once again of the rear section of your apparatus. 
Let's start on the left lower corner. The very bottom light is a warning light. Moving up from that, revere, turn, reverse, turn, and brake. This is going to be your shore power inlet. You also have a shore power inlet on indicator light when you are connected to shore power. This is going to be the cable. It's a unique plug design. This is a 20 amp plug. Moving just to the right of that, you can see you have a large diameter intake. And just above that, this is the location for the left side stabilizer. You can see you have a high idle on off and also an emergency power. Moving just up above that, your license plate, warning light, and a rear facing spotlight. This is the location just behind this door for your aerial drain. Once you open the door, you'll also find the location for an open and close for the aerial drain, but you also find the relief valve located at the very top in the brass color. Moving just to the right, you'll find another uh, access door, but I'd also like to draw your attention to the two closed hooks in the very back for towing. This is going to be for emergency power for the stabilizers. Um, moving up from that location, this is your ladder storage. Starting on the left hand side, you can see you have a two section 35 and a 13 foot combo ladder. Just above that, you can see you have some long tools. Down the center, you can see that you have pike poles that are located in this location of varying sizes, 6, 8, and 12. Moving to the left in the uh, packaging, this is going to be the foam fill. Moving to the very right hand side, you have what appears to be three ladders in this section and the very top. You have a 28 two section, a 16 roof, a 20 foot roof. Moving to the outer section here, you can see you have an additional 20 foot roof. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rear section of the apparatus with the compartments closed. On the right, you can see there is a danger label and on the left, a warning label. Let's go ahead and look at the lower compartment here. This is going to be the access for the stabilizer control, high idle and emergency power for hydraulics. This is going to be a through compartment to the bulkhead for large diameter hose storage. Moving up to the very top, you have a warning light in addition with a rear facing uh, work light. Generalized view of the passenger side of the apparatus. Let's start with the uh, section here that involves the last compartment. You have a vertical compartment here. It has pegboard on it. Moving to the outer side in silver here. This is going to be your stabilizer on the right. Just in front of that, you can see this is a large compartment that has adjustable shelving options. And moving uh, to the front of that location, a smaller compartment. This is a through compartment to the other compartment we just visualized. Above that compartment, you have a side facing floodlight. As we look at these compartments, they're identical to the opposite side of the apparatus. Let's start in the very back. You have a bottle storage location here. Moving forward. You have SCBA storage. This is a compartment that also has uh, what I like to refer to as a hidden compartment in the very center. There are three here. Lift up the uh, very center section and you gain to a fourth location here. There are also straps for securing those devices or those bottles. And then moving forward in this compartment, you have an additional bottle storage. And just beneath that bottle storage, I would like to direct you to the warning sign here. Uh, exhaust now is extremely hot and be cautious of where you park next to flammable uh, items. Let's go ahead and look just underneath at the tailpipe. In addition with you have folding chocks. Let's go ahead and move up. This is going to be the two compartments identical to the other side. Um, they have the adjustable shelf in the center. Moving forward of that, we'll go ahead and take a look at the vertical compartment. Inside this vertical compartment, this is what's going to house a variety of different shelves. And then just beneath that, this is going to be your exhaust and also your folding wheel chocks. Moving just forward of this compartment, you can see you have five adjustable shelves in this location. And at the very top of that compartment, there was also a shore power connection for uh, 
outlets. Let's go ahead and look at a generalized view of the side of your pump, and then we'll get into a little bit more of the specifics. Same concept or folding step as you have on the opposite side. We've already gone through that, but let's look at some of those components next on this side, the passenger side pump panel. Let's go ahead and start with your cab lift. Once things are secured within the cab, you can uh, use the red handle to lower or raise, and then the uh, bottom switch here is what you're activating the pump to actually uh, put pressure into the cylinders. Next to it is the water strainer. Moving next to the water strainer is your large diameter intake. And as you can see, as we look to the uh, left-hand side, you're gonna find, I'm sorry, right-hand side, you're gonna find uh, this is your electronic valve. This is the override for that, which would require a tool. Same thing underneath the very bottom. This is for large diameter discharge uh, for the top and also the bottom. Let's go ahead and take a look now at the lower section of the pump panel. Once again, you have a water strainer drain. This is a turn to the right to open, right uh, or to the left, and then right to tighten, which is closing. This is the passenger side auxiliary inlet. And just beneath that, these are the subsequent drains for each one of those devices that we just talked about. Same configuration as the passenger side as it is to the driver side. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. You have this vertical compartment here. Generalized view of the front of your apparatus. Let's go ahead and take a look at the very front section. This is just a different angle. We originally showed it from underneath, but this is gonna be that front bumper, uh, front discharge drain. Looking just inside this um, air intake, you'll find your air filter in addition with uh, just in the upper right hand corner is your uh, door lock. Let's go ahead and move to the very front of the apparatus and uh, we'll talk about the cab here and some of those warning labels within the doors. These are going to be your seatbelt warning labels. Looking uh, just to the back section of the cab, this uh, at the hinge point is a, a grasp point to go ahead and gain entry into the rear of the cab. And then once again, uh, all of the door entry point doors will have these warning labels. Uh, please uh, utilize the seat belts. They're easily seen, they're visible in red. This is gonna be your door lock. Uh, you can see by moving the uh, red selector switch to lock or unlock to the right of that where the uh, window activators. Looking now from the uh, driver's side, we're going to move to the very front door and we'll start moving through some of the components in there. Once again, you have automatic door locks uh, to the left and then uh, the right side is your window activation for up and down. Let's take a general look inside the cab. Uh, as we move inside, once again, you'll see the red seat belts. Those are for easy visualization of those belts to see if someone has their belt on. I'm going to direct you down to the bottom underneath the seat area. Uh, you're going to find two controls. One, air activation control for uh, lifting the seat and lowering the seat. And then uh, an additional one uh, in the yellow uh, for the tilt forward and backward of the back of the seat. I'd like to direct down to the very bottom, uh, about uh, foot level. You'll find a warning and a caution label. Also moving uh, just to the right, you'll find this yar uh, large yellow placard. Uh, this placard basically is uh, manufactured by Pierce for the city of Spokane. It has your manufacturer year date. Um, it also has on uh, this placard uh, your job number. In addition with gross vehicle weight rating as it comes from the uh, manufacturer without any alterations. As you look down to the very bottom also, you'll find the VIN number uh, for your apparatus. And also underneath that, you're gonna find your fluid capacities and types of fluids. Let's go ahead and take a look uh, inside the cab, lower section here. This is going to be your brake and also your accelerator. Moving to the left, you have a foot pedal for your air horn. And we're going to move up from that location. This is going to be your main battery switch in red. And as we look uh, to the next section up here, you're going to find the stationary for OK to pump for rolling, your water pump, your foam system, and also your CAFS system switches. As we move to the opposite side of the steering column, you're going to find on the underneath side in the gray uh, cap here, this is your SRS and trans uh, diagnostic port. In black, your engine ABS diagnostic port. Looking at general appearance here from under this uh, section of the uh, steering column, 
we'll dig into a little bit more of those. On the right hand side, this is going to be your interaxle differential lock unlock and it also has an indicator. Generalized view from the operator's position looking forward. This is going to be your steering wheel, but let's focus in on the column itself. Left hand side, you have your right and left turn signal, pull for high beams, push for telescoping column and pull for the tilting of that column. Generalized view of the front section of your dash. Let's go ahead and break down a little more here. Let's start with the left hand side of your dash. You have your oil temperature, water temperature, trans temperature, voltage meter and an aerial in addition with uh, your RPMs uh, tachometer. On the right, speedometer, fuel, DEF level and front and rear brakes. Generalized view here of the uh, dash area of the operator. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the components. We'll start in the upper left hand corner. This is going to be your headlights on, uh, dimmer for your panel. You also have wipers, uh, the wiper uh, intermittency, uh, OK to engage which is a uh, indicator light and on the far right you, in the red is your uh, high idle switch. We'll move down to the next set of switches here. Let's start on the left with the retarder select on off. You also have your Thelma indicator, four stages of power for that. Your DPF region, your DPF region inhibit in red. And on the far right hand side you have your uh, passenger side window and a note that says pump in neutral Moving to the right of that location, this is going to be your aerial master, your aerial CAFS PTO, your aerial CAFS PTO engaged indicator. You have a stabilizers not stowed in red indicator light, off-road traction devices, and you have your airbag or SRS fault indicator. Down from there, front wheel lock to the right of that, your main parking uh, brake. The front wheel lock uh, must be engaged uh, for CAFs to operate and also for the aerial to operate. On the right hand side in yellow, this is going to be your uh, primary parking system uh, maxi brake. Moving uh, just to the left of that, you'll find your Allison transmission pad. Uh, located on the slant angle here, you're going to find your mirror controls uh, for controlling the mirror functions. This is going to be your David Clark headset system. And you can see here your front wheel lock. Uh, to apply that, uh, you need to have uh, the engine in the operating position or running position. Looking over uh, on the side of the panel, you can see there's a 12 volt receptacle. What I'd like to point out here at the very top of the screen here is the uh, white sticker with the uh, red uh, candy cane uh, around the outside edge. Uh, we'll get to that in the next uh, slide, but first let's talk about your load manager, your indicators. Uh, looks like you have some future switches and also a USB and a spare switch. This is the warning label that I wanted to refer to. You'll find these throughout the truck. This is going to be uh, an indication that you have electrical wires behind this panel. Let's go ahead and start in the operators just above that person's head. On the left, you'll find that there is a yellow um, tag here on this tag you're going to find the height length and gross vehicle rate uh, and on in addition with the job number of your apparatus let's start at the top this is your emergency master roof light warning side rear warning and upper rear warning uh, you also have an intensely focused spotlight that shines down in the driver's uh, steering wheel area or mapping area and just to the uh, kind of back position of that this is going to be the uh, swivel to unlock your uh, visor to allow it to move down into the uh, uh, utilized position. Let's go ahead and look just overhead. You're going to find a set of switches here. This is your white cutout, uh, your Opticom, perimeter lights, front flood, siren, and brake. Driver's side alley, driver's side scene, driver's side flood, passenger side flood and scene, and also passenger side alley. Uh, in the left, you'll find the Pierce information for your seatbelts, and on the right, you'll find a door ajar uh, information. This is going to be your seatbelt in red, indicating that someone does not have their belt on, in green, that they're occupying the seat and the belt is on. Once again, this is your uh, full truck description for if you have any compartment doors open, they'll illuminate to, to that location. This is going to be your Code 3 electronic siren and also the PA. Next, to have a generalized view overhead. 
Uh, the rope here is going to be for your air horn. Uh, what I would like to move forward is the uh, red light in the center here. Uh, this is going to be a do not move apparatus when this light is on. This is also indicating that you have a uh, compartment open. Over the head you have a white and red push on and off lights. Generalized view from the operator seat looking back to the center. You have storage compartment with a roll up door and then on the uh, passenger side an additional seat. Let's go ahead and look from the uh, driver's side rear. Um, this is looking into the cab. Once again, you'll find a variety of warning labels on each of the doors. Just behind the operator, this is going to be your 12 volt supply system. Let's go ahead and look overhead. Uh, this is going to be in the rear section. This is your David Clark system for your headsets. Moving to the rear section, you can see you have an adjustable shelf inside your roll-up compartment. And you also have at the very top of this shelf uh, shore power uh, for your shore outlet. Um, this is power when you are plugged in to shore power. Generalized view of the uh, rear seat uh, and forward facing fold down seat. Let's go ahead and take a look uh, just up from that location. Once again, this is your access point for your David Clark system in yellow where you'd hang your headset. Moving uh, to the center in between the passenger and driver, this is an access point for engine. Once you have opened this door, you can see you have access for the engine oil and trans oil. Um, this is illuminated compartment in the upper left hand corner, there is a light. Let's go ahead and look. This is your, uh, once again, red seat belts uh, for visual indication, but this is also your uh, tensioning and holding device to hold it um, in position. Generalized view looking from the passenger side into the center of the cab. And let's talk a little bit about uh, as we move forward into the front seat uh, opposite of the operator. Uh, your vehicle also has at the very bottom here at the foot pedals an electronic siren and a mechanical siren. These are foot pedals to activate each of those devices. As we look on the exterior, you find you also have seatbelt warning information, but more importantly, your vehicle is equipped with SRS, so please do not block that for your SRS. Down on the very far right-hand side, this cap is for your windshield wiper fill, and you'll also see an access panel in the lower section of this, just underneath your SRS, which houses components behind that. As we look up onto the left hand side of your dash, this is your push to talk and volume for your David Clark system. We'll talk a little bit about the components that are mounted on the housing itself. You have a parking brake on the left, a siren brake, 12 volt access supply, and your vehicle data recorder. Looking just up overhead, you have an all weather system radio CD player. You have a future spot for future components. Moving even further to the left, uh, this is going to be your uh, Panasonic. Uh, weather radio, but let's go ahead and look uh, further to the left hand side and this is going to give you your pump pressure, your water uh, tank vision, and your foam tank vision. As we look to the uh, outside of the apparatus, we're now underneath the uh, ladder. This is going to be a foam for your uh, water. Um, this is going to be your foam for tank A. And I think I have another image here. This is the uh, water fill location for your main water tank. This is going to be the filter breather for your hydraulic system. Uh, you can see in the upper left hand corner of the placard, this is for the aerial hydraulic oil. Um, this is the types of oil and ambient range you can operate in. Down beneath this area, this is going to be the location for uh, indication for empty and full or add for hydraulic uh, oil levels. General view here of your CAFS system and just to the right of that you're going to find a cooling fan for your CAFS system also. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the components on your aerial. First let's start. Uh, your aerial has a pinnable waterway. Uh, to the right hand side this is the lever that can make that happen. Um, make sure that your ladder is stowed when you're doing that. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, some of the components at the tip. You have a removable uh, in red tip. This is going to be your uh, intercom system. This will be storage location for additional ladders on the side. 
Uh, and as we move forward uh, of the ladder here, you'll see you have two fold down steps uh, that come into your walkway here uh, for standing when your ladder is at that pinned location. This is going to be the control center for operation of the aerial device. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of those in the very back section here. The, the yellow uh, safety bars will lift so you can gain access to the caged area. Once you've made access in the cage area, be cautious of your foot placement while rotations. As we look, we have a dead man switch on the left hand center, uh, left hand side, which is in orange. And on the left hand side, this is going to be to align your aerial uh, for parking or bedding your ladder. On the right hand side of the pedestal, there are also some warning labels. These are also the uh, safety devices to prevent you from falling off while you're on top of the aerial section. Let's talk a little bit about some of the components that are housed within this pedestal. First, let's start at the very top. This is going to be your uh, communication device, your intercom. Just beneath the speaker uh, is going to be your push for increasing the volume and also push to talk. Moving down onto the panel, the red cover switch is to provide remote power uh, to the tip of your ladder. Moving just down from that location to the right, this is your hydraulic pressure. Moving up to the top, this is going to be an amber light indicating that you've short jacked or your uh, stabilizer is not fully extended. This is your waterway flow. Moving to the left hand side on the cover, this is going to be your information regarding weights and the amount of water that can flow through your aerial device that has been tested through Pierce. There are also warning and hazard labels located on the cover. These are going to be your three controls for uh, location of your ladder. This is your uh, Spokane Fire Department logo on the side of the ladder and just on the inside of that would be additional ladder storage. Let's take a look at the tip. On the passenger side you have two LED forward facing lights. You also have on the tip here a, la a uh, chainsaw scabbard. Moving just on the opposite side, the red uh, front section of your ladder is replaceable if damaged. You also have a pinnable waterway, and this is how it's done when it's in the stored position. Moving to the uh, driver's side, there are two forward-facing LED lights. Let's look from the exterior up from the ground. Uh, this is going to be uh, the degrees indicator for the position of your ladder. Uh, it's also a working light in that area also so that you can easily visualize that. Congratulations on your new apparatus Spokane. If you have any questions regarding the content of this video or any questions regarding some of the components, please contact your Hughes Fire associate. Thank you and congratulations.